And her dad went all the way to Australia. This is going to be the most exciting night of my life. Black Business by Wesley N. Life, the one thing money can't buy, but we all need money to live. Though it is the reason for all of our problems. Still, people think it will fix them. Anyway, forget what I said, it was weird. My name is Joe, or NSA, not so average. My goal is to infiltrate Trazalk and grab the lenses of infinite knowledge. Easy, right? You might have noticed I'm not speaking out loud. That's because I like to think. A massive room, all for myself. Oh, I'm just being weird again. Where was I? Right, the L-O-I-K, Lenses of Infinite Knowledge. Remember, I need them to become the ultimate businessman so I can live my best life. One more thing, my power is, um, I'll just explain. Let's say I've got a pencil. A pencil is not that sturdy. It's thin, around 15 to 20 centimetres long and uh, has lead inside. I can manipulate it to make it squishy, heavy, buoyant or soft, but I cannot change its appearance or size. I can't add to it or take away from it. There's a lot I can't do, but with the lenses, I can. All that I said I couldn't do with a pencil, I can do with the lenses. The best thing is, I can also create things out of thin air. Just a click of my fingers and a, a perfectly forged sword is in my hands. Truly amazing. Anyhow, the problem is they are in Trezalk and it's difficult to break in, but I can do it. Let's head off. I walked out of my hideout. It was located on the black market planet. The entrance was old and damp, so no one would be intrigued enough to search it. I'm quite a lonely man, an anti-hero. I work for myself. Now, to figure out how to get to Trazalk. Five hours later. Well, I panted, I made it. I stood in front of the techno prison entrance. It's a super confusing complex. I need to find a way onto the roof. Yeah, the roof, I strategized. I used my power to make my shoes and carbon fiber gloves nice and sticky. The techno prison was taller than the Eiffel Tower, but I managed. The view was disgusting, honestly. If I wasn't wearing shades, my eyes would be bleeding. Better make my suit bullet resistant, I thought. Boom, I broke in through the roof. I knocked out the guard on my left and tasered the other. The L-O-I-K are in the basement, I said to myself. I'm on the top floor and there's a hundred thousand floors, so this is going to take a while. Six hours later. Too easy, I said with a smirk while dusting off my hands. I popped off my old lenses and put in the L-O-I-K. The alarm went off. I was laughing. I'm more powerful now, <laughs> I said, walking right through the front entrance. I took out every guard in the prison. This was child's play. Now came the real challenge, becoming the richest and best black market businessman in the whole of Azadia. Just the thought of it made my heart fly right out of my chest. I made a spaceship. It looked professional, clean, cutting edge, and overall just awesome. I kept it in my head though, so when I reached the exit, it wouldn't have any malfunctions. I reached the exit, created some explosives, and yelled, sayonara! Tick, tick, boom! I blew up the door, blocking me from leaving the former techno prison planet, which now was more of a scrapyard. The spaceship was just like I imagined. I mysteriously looked back at the black market planet and said, Mum, look how far I've come. The sparkly tears ran down my cheek. I will also punish Father, for he has left us for dead, I thought, clenching my fist as I got into the spaceship. One space voyage later. Once home, I activated my retina and body scan. Beep, beep, beep. 
when my computer, as I turned it on, name, Joe, height, seven feet, age, 21, suit, top condition. You may now enter, Joe. I got all my gear ready. I'm coming, Father, I am gonna take you down, I said, it's now or never. My father was an excellent businessman, but he had left me and my mother for dead. I arrived at Life, that's the name of my dad's business, and bing, I took the elevator to my dad's office. At last, my son, he said, I've been waiting a while for this. Instantly, I drew my toy sword and shield and I made them hard as steel. The battle commenced, but my dad pulled out two M16 rifles and sprayed bullets at me. I got grazed by one of the bullets. Crud, I spat. My father was too fast. I was shot right in the chest. I'm sorry. I'm too weak, mother. I cried. Ariath by the Aegon K. Ariath is the most coolest and daring group ever. The team consists of three members, Raccoon, Turtle and Elephant. Raccoon is the vice president of the group and wears white silk pyjamas with black sunflowers all over them. Elephant is the associate of the group and he has an orange and pink onesie with dog trees on it. Elephant has been registered as the biggest man alive. Finally, Turtle, the leader and president of the group. Turtle was the only member not wearing PJs. In fact, he is wearing a suit. The suit is black and he has a black bow tie. But something changes when a button is pressed. War armor constructs around him. Big metal shoulder blades with spikes poking out. A helmet with horns and a chest plate. Now you know the characters, let's begin our story. This story starts on the planet Trazalk, a techno-prison planet. The area were put in prison seven years ago. They were put in Trazalk for an awful crime, something no human ever wants to do. The area ate an expired chicken. What's the time? asked Raccoon. It's time for you to zip it, shouted Elephant. The cell was silent. Thud. Something fell from the roof. Elephant, Turtle and Raccoon shot up from their dusty old beds. The group was shocked when he saw a body. This body was not like the guards or the techno prison planet, brackets, TPP, police. This man had a black suit with matching black shades. He had spiky hair and a toy sword. Hmm, said the body. The body stood up and stared right into the raccoon's eyes, then elephant's, then the turtle's eyes. The group were confused, that raccoon was not. Joe, said raccoon. The group looked at raccoon. That was Joe, explained raccoon. Remember, from Africa. Nope, said elephant. I don't remember, said turtle. From camp, said raccoon. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Elephant and Turtle both laughed. There's no way that's Joe, exclaimed Elephant. Turtle looked at the lock. Oh my God, the lock. It's been unlocked, screamed Turtle. The area ran to the door, but just before they got there, the ground crumbled. They fell to the ground. They were stranded, floated in space, falling and falling. Boom! Trazzle went up in flames. Thud. The Ariath had landed on a spaceship. They look inside. Joe? They all say. Joe looks up. Then the spaceship's boosters start and the Ariath fly off. The spaceship flies into the atmosphere, which is black. The galaxy, Exadia, is empty except for all the planets. Two years later, crumble. The area have landed on a planet. This isn't any old planet. This is dead. An asteroid. That was part of what was called the mythical planet. It was a dark place with demons, demogorgons, werewolves, griffins and clowns. But clowns moved to the trinity. The demons became extinct. The demogorgons got an acting job from a Netflix show called Stranger Things 
while the Griffins are in place called Hogwarts. But the werewolves still hunt the asteroid. Ah, oh God, where are we? Said Turtle, who was confused. I don't know, said Raccoon. Ah, help, screamed Elephant. Turtle and Raccoon shot up and ran towards the scream. Faster and as faster they ran, but suddenly... Ah! Screamed Turtle. He was blasted off the asteroid. Wee Splat! A spaceship hit Turtle. Growl! Raccoon was snatched by... Werewolves. Here, put this on, said the werewolves. It's the Alpha Necklace. Raccoon put it on and transformed into the alpha wolf and he was left as a werewolf. From the book Zadia, the book of superpowers, written by the P7 class at Victoria Primary, this story is called The Plant Man by Aaron J. Chapter 1, Season 1. It has just begun. It was a Friday night, 11.38 p.m. Plant Man was waking up from a seven-year sleep. That is not long for him, though as seven years is like six minutes for him. He is 368 million years old. He was born in an egg. He has no family. And his lifespan is 85 billion years or 999 billion years. He is very fast. And he also has wings. He is also very tall. He has 193,000 stars on his body. He has eaten 273 million people. His weakness is sunlight. If any sun or light touches his body, his skin will burn. He also has 673 billion teeth. And he can eat one person in 0.5 seconds. And he can eat two people in one second. But this is the most amazing part. He can eat 10 or up to 50 people in three seconds. Wow. Anyway, back to the story. He was waking up and he only had 42 years to kill everyone because in 42 years his portal will close forever. So he goes to his portal, but then he sees a mythical planet. No way. Oh, well, it's easier to kill for me. So Plant Man rips off his head and eats the whole body in two seconds. Now he is going to the planet Earth. It takes him 48 years. When he gets there, he lands in the desert and the sun burns half of his right arm. He runs away really quickly into a tunnel next to him. He falls asleep in the tunnel for 27 years. 27 years is like an hour for him. After having a sleep in the tunnel, he needs to find out what country he's in. When he runs out of the tunnel, it's nighttime. So that's good for him. When he's running, he sees a flag and notices he's in Moscow. He sees the Russian soldiers marching and goes over to the crowd and eats half of them. They have guns and are shooting at him. He eats the rest of them. The crowd starts screaming and running away. He eats them all in three seconds. He then eats the whole of Russia, so no one is left. He goes out of the galaxy and back to the mythical planet to get some sleep, as it's too dangerous for him to sleep on Earth. He goes through his portal, but the portal closes as he is away for too long. So he gets trapped in the galaxy. No one knows if he can come back.